everybody, this is WMAX Boston powerhouse radio personality, Jimmy J. I want to introduce you to an exciting and informative podcast about a great sport I've always loved, harness racing. I've been to the track many times, and I'm a big fan. This broadcast focuses on horse racing integrity and many other important facts of the sport. Now, here it is, the Harness Racing Alumni Show, with your host, Freddie Hudson and Trey Martin. This is Freddie Hudson, and I'm here with Trey Martin and Bob Marks. The Harness Racing Alumni Show has an urgent message from Judy Bachman of the Standard Bread Retirement Foundation. Thank you. As many people know, Paula Campbell and myself have started the Standard Bread Retirement Foundation 31 years ago to help the horses who can no longer compete or be bred to have a life after racing. And today, with the situation that we have with the COVID-19, we have a very serious situation here at the organization. We have 403 trotters and pacers that we are feeding every single day. They are under our care. Um, they have meant there are many different facilities because we do not own a farm. Um, and uh, presently, we cannot do any adoption. So we are really overwhelmed with horses. And 403, if you think about what it costs to feed a horse every day, and if you know our friends in harness racing think about what that bill is every month to take care of a horse, uh, it's astronomical, and we need some help. Um, Typically, the support for these animals uh, doesn't so much come from the harness racing industry. Uh, it comes from individuals, people that uh, love these animals, love these horses. Um, and yes, there are people in harness racing that help, but they're individuals. And the primary donor um, right now is in trouble. Our fundraisers have been canceled. These are fundraisers that feed our horses every year, and we count on them. The folks that donate to us, they're in trouble as well financially. A lot of these people have lost their jobs. And today we have to reach out to everyone in harness racing, individuals, um, breeding farms, breeders, uh, trainers, owners, drivers. We need everyone to please step up and help us so that we can keep these horses, keep them fed, take care of them, get through this crisis. Today, we put out a plea with a list of the names of all these horses. If anyone is familiar with Facebook, they are um, at the organization, on the organization's Facebook page at Standard Bread Retirement Foundation. Um, the primary thing right now and the easiest way to help is by making a tax-deductible donation. This would enable us to keep the horses at the farms that they are at, and they're at many different locations. Um, the, second, uh, the second thing that would help is if facilities can open the doors, take in a few horses. The grass is coming up right now. It would not be expensive. Just help us lighten our load until the, the virus is under control. We can use foster homes. It would be fabulous to have some wonderful foster homes. We have horses in New Jersey, New York, Virginia, Kentucky, um, North Carolina. There are many, many states. So we are asking everyone to please, please make a donation. Our uh, website is adoptahorse.org. Um, everything is set up in there to help. It's the easiest way. But our address is, is also a way for us to get uh, donations. Not so easy to get into the post office and get into the office right now um, with the restrictions, but we are managing. Our staff is down by 80%, but we are going in a couple of times a week, and the address is Post Office Box 312 Millstone Township, New Jersey, 08535, and our phone number is 609-738-3255. Thank you so much. We look forward to a lot of help. It's time to give back to these horses. We don't want to get to any kind of drastic situation so that we can manage them and not decide who gets fed and who doesn't. Thanks so much, Freddie. We urge everyone to go to adoptahorse.org and send some money in to help our horses out. Our horses are our sport. Without them, we do not have a sport. Thank Good. you, Fred. This is Freddie Hudson, and I'm here with Trade Martin and Bob Marks. The coronavirus is real, and the death toll keeps rising. We ask all of our listeners to practice social distancing, 
wash your hands frequently, and we pray that you all remain safe and healthy. This week's returning guest, the Jockey Club's CEO, Jim Gagliano. Welcome back, Jim. Oh, thanks, Fred. I'm glad to be back. Jim, since the last time you were on the show, so much has happened. And last month, we had 29 indictments and arrests for illegal drug use in both of our sports, involving some of our leading trainers. Do we see more arrests coming? I would imagine, yes. I would imagine that the government is pursuing cases and other evidence that they've been able to gather as a result of those arrests, and I think it would be logical to assume that there will be more. Do you think the next round is going to center on one sport versus the other, or is it going to be balanced out on both sports again, do you feel? It's so hard to tell. I mean, certainly it's not information that I have available to me. It does look like it was pretty well balanced to start with, and it was always interesting as we've read the indictments to see the connections between the sports. It really does tell you that while we all look at our sports differently, we have a lot of common threads, and clearly cheating and the misuse of medications and doping is something that plagues both our sports. Well, I, I know that the Jockey Club, along with Jeff Garrell, hired Five Stones um, Investigations to investigate. Who else was involved in hiring them? Well, we were the prime. It's been a great pleasure to work with Jeff and Jason Settlemoyer and Bryce Cody. Their commitment to integrity is second to none, and it's been a great relationship. We did involve a couple of other racing associations, which I'm not at liberty to say who, but you know, obviously... The arrests were made in locations that are specific, so you can kind of guess which ones were probably involved. We're grateful for their assistance. They often provided access or materials that I know that uh, the federal authorities found very, very helpful. Okay. Recently, I read a statement that said that the current system is working and that it led to these indictments. What is your thought on that? Frankly, that's a joke. (laughs) The <laughs> um, current system isn't working. It would never have caught any of these actors. You know, there's no coordination across state line, which is so important. You saw in the indictments this involved individuals and misdeeds in numerous states. First of all, our state-based system would never, ever have caught that. And secondly, I don't think they're sophisticated enough to gather the evidence that's necessary to database it and to bring it together. You know, we commend the, the federal government for their involvement here and the excellent uh, detective work that was done in support of it. Racing has does not have that apparatus. It's probably never had that apparatus. We need to change that. Well, that's going to lead me to bringing up the uh, Horse Race Integrity Act, because that bill would put USADA in charge. For our listeners, USADA is the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. That would put USADA in charge, and that would give us a little power here, because they do know how to look for drugs, and they do know how to enforce this. Well, clearly they have highly skilled investigative teams working on the USADA side, and under the Horse Racing Integrity Act, we fully expect that they would build a similar team for horse racing. But in point of fact, you mentioned Five Stones and the relationship that we have with them. Frankly, that was a referral made to us by the folks from the United States Anti-Doping Agency, as they've used them to supplement investigations from time to time, and including in the WADA cases, that's well reported, where Five Stones played a key role in basically disclosing and bringing to light all of the misdeeds in the Olympics by the Russians. Jeff had told us when he was on the show last week that Yosada was made up of a lot of former FBI agents, and they had a lot of connections with the FBI, which also helped in the investigations from my understanding. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's what they've, they've done very, very well. Drug enforcement, IRS, FBI, um, are the backgrounds of some of the people that we've met and been engaged with, and that's critical. These aren't just local de- detectives. These are people that have really cut their teeth on very difficult federal investigations, and they know what they're doing. And I know like when we go into Washington, D.C. to lobby, when the indictments came out, it gave us a lot of ammunition. It was a lot easier talking to people and saying, look, it was no longer a question of we suspect. It was like, here it is. <laughs> so. Well, we've long had these ideas in our heads that there was problems. Uh, Bob Marx is here. He remembers my tenure back at the Meadowlands starting in 1991. Oh, yeah. When I was appointed director of operations, I remember just about the first meeting I attended was a meeting with a number of important owners who were really concerned, and this was probably like August or September of 1991, they were concerned about cheating in the game and that they were being so disadvantaged. It's nothing new. Um, There's been books written about it. We need a system change, and that's what the Horse Racing Integrity Act is all about. And it shouldn't be lost on anyone that the middle name of the act is integrity, and that's what we really need to confront. 
Correct, and you cannot be against integrity. No, no. And, you know, as far as the USTA, I'm aware of their statements, and I've got a good relationship with Russell Williams. I look forward to sitting down with he and, and his representatives and having an honest discussion about how we can work together. I have great respect for the USTA and what it's, what it's built. They're a partner of, of the Jockey Club and some businesses. We definitely see that we have common goals, so we'll look forward to working with them. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And I guess we're about out of time. Um, Trey, did you have anything to say? Great having you on again, Jim. I love fellow Italians because I am full Italian myself, you know, so. <laughs> well, I only get half, but uh, I'm, I'm very proud That's of right. my heritage. That's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. You do great work and a great service for all of us. Thank you, Jim. And hang around for a little bit. A big thank you to the USTA for recently endorsing the SAFE Act, a bill that will bring a stop to our horses being shipped to Canada and Mexico for slaughter. I now encourage them to endorse the Horse Racing Integrity Act. This is Freddie Hudson, and on behalf of Bob Mark, Trade Martin, and myself, we pray that all of our listeners are and will remain safe. We encourage you to wash your hands regularly and continue with social distancing. That's a wrap for this week's broadcast. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to tune in next week. The Harness Racing Alumni Show. 